Hey, folks, welcome to Caching in the Northwest. You know, this is the podcast from the birthplace of geocaching right here in the great Pacific Northwest. Now, it's Thursday at 9 p.m. Pacific, and they call me Chris of the Northwest. And we're going to talk about geocaches and geocachers from here and all around the globe. So while you're putting out spot fires from your neighbor's Roman candles, we'll be caching in the Northwest. Yes, indeed, because as we record this, it is U.S. Independence Day. So happy Independence Day to all y'alls. And as they refer to it in Canada, Thursday. <laughs> but, at you least, know, we at least we have to admit that, you know, uh, on the calendar, Canada Day came first this year. So um, as it usually does. Well, yes, because uh, I lost. Oh, there it is there. Now we can officially celebrate Canada Day. I have mm-hmm. the canadian flag waving behind me will be okay you, you can just leave that going all night because it's kind of cool how your shoulders fit right into the sides of the flag you like that yeah well if you know it is also the fourth of july so you know you have to have the american flag there as well well jim's already got that in the fireworks so. yeah because i'm hearing the fireworks outside my windows here so uh, i don't know if they're coming through the mic but they're yeah they're out they're going so That's i just gotta just leave that running tonight anyway yes Happy Canada Day a few days late. Happy Independence Day to the U.S. And tonight, we're talking about the top 10 tips for new geocachers. If you're just finding this episode, finding this podcast, maybe you saw an advertisement in an ammo can somewhere on a mountaintop. I don't know. Could happen. Live audience, let us know. Do you have any great tips for a new geocacher? I know somebody that might, but first we have to introduce him. It's time to bring in our newbie neanderthal some say he believes a mai tai has a knot in it and others say well after tonight's show you'll be talking about him for years all we know is he's called land monkey i just don't get no respect around here (laughs) Uh, that's not new though that's not a newbie term. that's that's nothing new about that at all uh awesome awesome good times good to be back here and yes happy uh fourth of july um to all of our canadian listeners happy belated canada day uh both of our respective countries uh celebrating um just how awesome it is to live wherever it is you live so and it's still the fourth of july in canada it it is yeah it's not independence day it's only happy once you're south of the u.s border up here is it's Thursday. Like, <laughs> give me another day and it'll be happier. But no, it's all Monday. Good. Monday is the best day of the week. <laughs> so much to look forward to. On yes, Monday, right? nobody's Monday. ruined your week yet. That's right. Monday is my <laughs> favorite. Morning. Yeah, I mean, other than Thursday. There you go. Thursday, that's be good. Thursday. Thursday at nine o'clock. Yeah, I mean, that's what they built the internet for. That's right. Well, that's why they added extra servers to the internet. That's for mm-hmm. sure. All right. Well, hey, um, we appreciate the uh, buffering of the internet so that our show doesn't buffer. Um, A quick reminder that we also appreciate the support of our patrons who help to keep this podcast coming each and every week. Thanks to Land Sharks, L E N D S H A R K Z dot C A, one of our corporate Denali level sponsors. Check out the deals and the sales and everything that you can find uh, online at landsharks.ca or in the physical store if you uh, are in Esquimalt and check that out. Um, our other corporate Denali level sponsor, well, that would be Gold Country Geotourism. Visit exploregoldcountry.com, learn about the geotours, the region, and don't forget to download the app and plan your voyage to Gold Country soon, like this summer, maybe even. Mm-hmm. All right. And folks, if you want to know uh, more about supporting this here podcast, well, we encourage you to head on over to the Caching NW 
patreon.com website and click on the Patreon link there. That is where you will find out more and have the opportunity to support us like some people have since the last time we covered this topic. Chris, you were doing some research on this. You know, I look back to, you know, see what we talked about last time we talked about new cashers and it was episode 248. So um, I didn't pay attention to what year that was. That's like not even halfway through what exactly. we're at today. Yeah. Exactly. And um, I noticed we had, I don't know, a dozen or so patrons. 90% of them are still patrons today. So thank you guys for all your support. We certainly appreciate it. That's that's amazing that that many people have stuck with us, mm -hmm. uh, supporting us. Um, clearly, there's a bunch of people who have nothing better to do with their money. And uh, you better believe that. It's right. like, these guys suck. We better do whatever we can to help them because they're not stopping anytime soon. So <sighs> you're like right. We're not train we're gonna wreck. Keep doing this. Yeah. Can't look away from the train wreck. Wow. <laughs> uh, but we, you know, all joking aside, we, we appreciate everybody who supports the show, but a special shout out to those who've been with us for that long. Mm -hmm. and stuck with us. That's pretty, pretty amazing. And, mm -hmm. and I'm just amazingly thankful for that. Yes. We have some amazing patrons. Sure do. All right. Well, thanks oh, for doing wait. that research, Chris. That was kind of cool. I, are you waiting for me? Am I supposed to be reading something? Okay. No. Well, <laughs> it's all listen, good. No, we're just we're just bantering about how much we love okay. our patrons. That's right. Ordinarily, yeah, we would be asking what a glow is right now, but we're not going to do that this week. No, we're not going to do that tonight. No. no. So, along the same lines, though, we did get some comments, input, feedback from, well, from the website. In this case, I don't think they called two five three six nine three TFTC. Although you could. You could also email feedback at cachingnw.com. You could that send works. it a field recording that to that address. What else could you do, Chris? Well, I don't know. I think he got it all done. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. You could, you could show up. TFTC. Um, I was going to say, you could show up at Chris's house. You could. And yeah. uh, invite yourself down into the studio and record. You know, job. I would probably let you. <laughs> um, or you can reach us on the geocaching messenger. There you go. Send them all Good kinds options. of ways. We're all out Good there. Options. Anyway, this came in from the website this week. Who is a glow? How about that? Uh, DVSTRR Media Core. Is that just a that is that their username, or is that just a a function applet on your website that yeah. reports that name? I don't know. That's that's not from the website. Um, so I think they had to type that in. Okay. Wow. Well, thank you for whoever it is for sending this in. Mm -hmm. They uh, they said, yo, I was climbing Gold Mountain in Kitsap County. It's the Kitsap County High Point. Earlier today, at Kitsap County, that's out uh, on the peninsula, as I recall, mm -hmm. from Western Washington there. And I found you guys' advertisement in the cash box. I've never heard it called a cash box before. It's and like and I didn't know cash. we had an advertisement. Yeah. I'm probably just one of the... Sticker? sticker uh, or a business card yeah, or something yeah we had stickers we had cards we had those yeah. postcards for a while Actually, yeah that's right around somewhere and then he goes on he or she i'm extremely surprised that y'all are still active i remember bantering with my friend that this website probably hasn't been online since 2013 2013 but here we are so <laughs> and that's where that's where it ends it just says here the we suspense. are so. the suspense maybe they're going to call back next week and continue that thread yeah. i don't know that would Just be excellent. Still... So if you who sent that into the website are out there listening or watching or whatever, well, bleep bloop down in the comments if you like, or send us an email or call 253-693-TFTC. Tell us all about your adventures up there in Kitsap County. Indeed. Chris, is there a character limit on the website? Uh, no, not that I'm aware of. <laughs> so, it really is like well, so. We but, got a message from one character. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, but I believe that's the way people talk nowadays, right? Could be. And so you know, I didn't cool. even think this website was up, uh, up, but here we are. So here we are. So uh, then I would expect an ellipsis, right? So dot dot dot. 
That's uh, punctuation. If you're expecting people to do correct pronunciation or punctuation or went into those things, it's not going to happen. All right. Well, devious, deviouster media core, deviouster media. I don't know. I'm not sure how, how we would pronounce that. You got to call in. That's and right. Let us know how to pronounce that. I think it's there the Death go. Star Media Core. Oh, uh, you know, that makes more sense. Now mm -hmm. demonstrate the full power of this active space station <laughs> or something. I get the line all wrong, but. Uh, all right. You wish another target, a military one, then name the system. Okay. Well, right, here yeah, I yeah. am on a uh, rabbit oh. hole trying to figure out when 248 posted. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have it on YouTube, but I'm not finding where it's posted. Hey, we tried. We tried to banter long enough. It's up to I know. you now, <laughs> and it just wouldn't give up on that. And I should have many clicks ago, folks. If you want to contribute to tonight's topic, and I already see that you are, use the hashtag top ten to post something into the chat, and our intrepid chat lackey will be there to grab that. As he already has, or or she, I guess we hey. should be, you know, they, them, has grabbed it. And, um, of course, you can use the hashtag FATAS to bring up anything for the after show. And that could be something that's not related to tonight's topic. But you know what? You want to talk about it. And we want to talk about it with you. If you're jazzed about it, let us know. <laughs> and just in case you want to know, the intrepid chat lackey may or may not be playing games in the background. Hmm. Okay. You know, we've we've known the Intrepid chat lackey for many years, and he plays all sorts of games. Yes. Intrepid is not the same as attentive. I would agree. <laughs> That's true. <coughs> he has been known to monkey around, so oh. to speak. But um bump. Yeah. Ba -dum -bump. All right. Well, hey, we're talking Hi. about newbie tips tonight. And yeah. maybe somebody just noodling around YouTube stumbled into this episode and doesn't even know what geocaching is. They're that new. That could be. Awesome. It's they possible. They could have found an advertisement. Well, so in a, in a cash box. Yeah. Yeah. At, at a ticket booth or a rummage sale or... Or a large event. A Kiwanis pancake breakfast. I went to one this morning. Oh. It was quite delicious. Did, did you take our advertisements with you? I did not disappointing but uh -huh. it was all you can eat so i went back three times because there was three hosts and i had enough pancakes oh, well thank you thank yeah. you for representing us yeah there. absolutely well played so if you're new to this whole game geocaching is an outdoor adventure game where you navigate to a specific set of gps coordinates and then attempt to find the geocache container uh, hidden at that location I know this because it says so in the notes <laughs> when you find it sign your name on the log sheet replace it as found as found and log your find online that's it the end yep thanks for <laughs> okay, joining thanks us tonight very much <laughs> folks we'll see you next week <laughs> oh too funny but uh i mean yeah in its simplest terms that's mm -hmm. what there is to the game and you know there's there's so many uh <laughs> three hams to tell them to flee now before they get hooked on the obsession that's right Flee, you Flee. fools. Yes. Flee, you fools. Um, but yeah, I, that's uh, in a summary, that's what there is to the game. But I think tonight we're going to kind of walk through uh, a little bit more detail, things that are really helpful to know the first time you go out to play the game or right. maybe the 10th time you go out to play the game. Or even the 100th or 1,000th. Maybe. We'll you know. find out. Okay, let's start with number one. Download the official geocaching app. Now, we want you to download the official one. There are lots of geocaching apps out there, right? Whether you have yep. iOS or Android or I don't think, I think they just pulled support for Windows phone. So if that, you may have to. Um, what if I've got a BlackBerry? What about my Palm Pre? There you go. Okay, so <laughs> anyway. let's just move on. If you have an iOS or Android phone, and we know you do, um, go get the official geocaching app. It's easy to install. It's very user-friendly and provides good tutorials to yeah. help you understand what 
the different type of caches are. We'll talk about those in a minute. Um, and under, help you to understand what to expect to do next. And it's going to sure. help you log your finds and, um, and get all the details you need on this cache. Yeah. I, and I think that's, you know, yeah. we're going to have yeah. experienced geocachers going, ah, no, don't use the official app. And in fact, if you're mm-hmm. brand new to the game and you go to an event and you meet some other geocachers, they'll say, oh, no, don't use, use this app or use that app. And you know what? There are some fantastic apps out there. Mm-hmm. But if you are brand new to the game, it's best to start with the official app for any number of reasons. But as Chris said, there's built-in tutorials that explain the game, walk, really walk you through it really well. Um, and uh, and it's just, it's really built for the brand new geocacher. Yeah. And that's why you start with the official app. Once you start playing it, the game a little bit more, you decide that, uh, as 3Ham said, that you're, you're addicted now. Um, then... It, start exploring the other apps mm-hmm. we've got great episodes with uh, the developers of the other apps that you can check out as well exactly i mean if you want to get into cashly you want to get into geogo you want to get you can get into any of these that's fine mm-hmm. but it, we suggest you know for your first few stick with the official app it's going to help you um keith says i still use the official app yeah oh well, there you go he corrected his spelling there but yeah. um and so does um, Green Words. Green Words. Thank you. She still uses the official app. I still have it on my phone. I pull it up from time to oh, time. It's not I, my primary app, but I do have it. Now, there are times when, you know, somebody will send me a GC code and it will open in the prim- or in the uh, original yeah. app. I'm like, well, I'm here. I'll use it. It's fine. And if I recall on my phone, at least because of the way my notifications are set up, if somebody sends me something to the message center, that's where I get it. Yes. Through that app. Yes. That's the only app that has the message center. So that's the, the number one reason I leave it on my phone is for yeah. the message center now. Okay. But we'll move on. Uh, step number two. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I am. Yes. Y- y- yes. Don't use Cashly for Android because it doesn't exist. Okay. You cut, know him some, cut him some slack. It's his birthday, or at least yeah, yeah. it's near his birthday. And they said it's too hot to, for podcast baking, so they're eating ice cream for Iham's birthday. Nice. Happy birthday, Iham. Happy birthday to you. We'll we'll sing to you later. We don't want everybody's ears to bleed. You've been warned. We'll leave that for the after show. That's yeah. right. Um, now, number two yes. goes on to number one feeds on because when you go to um open the app it's going to ask you to create an account right so the official geocaching app does take you through those steps they ask you to create a um, cache name a screen name a username however you Mm want to call it (laughs) right an alias um and then you know assign a uh uh email account and such so you know, this is account is necessary for you to log your finds and keep track of everything. So you'll want to use the official app and you have to go create an account. And let's talk about that just for a moment. We've talked about it in previous episodes as well, but um, when you go to create your account, if you end up sticking with the game, Mm -hmm. you're going to, this is going to be the way that other geocachers recognize you and and acknowledge you and communicate with you right at events and such is that right land monkey right so (laughs) um you know maybe think about what it is so you know if you wanted to be um jb smith three seven seven five four four two um i mean fine but (laughs) right (laughs) maybe try and be you know think Think it through a little more creative. You can change it. You yes, can it can be done. And there cannot be two identical names in the game, which is exactly. why you can sometimes struggle to find one that you like. So mm-hmm. just something to maybe think about a little bit before. Um, yeah, and Keith says, uh, keep your username uh, PG. Uh, I would say actually G-rated, not PG-rated. Yeah. Um, because... Uh, after a while, HQ kind of they keep an eye on it. 
There you and go. And every once in a while, they'll go through. And if you have created a rather rude little name because it's funny and hey. They're innuendo all, or risque. We all think bathroom humor can be funny at times, but at uh, times. Uh, HQ does not want that in the game and uh, at least not in the usernames. That's right. And uh, they will change it on you and they will often change it to something that you're not going to want to keep. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and, you know, keep it relatively short because you're going to be writing it a lot. I mean, you yes. can buy stamps and that kind of things. But I, he told me this story himself, so I'll share it. When we were at the 20th anniversary event at Seattle Center, he, Brad said, boy, if I had known how many times I'd be cashing, I wouldn't have made my handle quads in the mud. <laughs> I have to write that out every time I sign a cash. So make it short. Make it short. What's in? Land monkey. What's yeah. in? Land monkey. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, maybe maybe not Chris of the Northwest, <laughs> unless you really like writing that out all the time. Although, Chris, I imagine you probably often just sign CNW. I sign CNW very often. Yeah, yeah. unless I've got enough room, you know, if it's a it's an event um, log, you know, with a whole page or or, you know, yeah. large wooden letters cut out that you can write on. Yeah, then then, yes, I put the whole name. But usually I just put CNW. It is easily abbreviatable. One thing I failed to mention is that this account is absolutely free and it can be, and it can stay free for your entire life, right? There's no reason you have to pay. Now there are features available yeah. to you if you choose to pay, but you will not be forced to pay if you want to continue to play the game. You won't, but if you really get into the game, you're going to want to pay the 40 us a year, uh, 30 us a year. Didn't they up or, it to 40? Or, oh, maybe they did. You're right. Wasn't that last year, last summer? That's why I paid ahead. It was a big deal? Yeah. Well, it, it's up to, like, anybody who was previously on the 30 plan has been grandfathered in. Mm -hmm. Right. But I'm just and, saying, like, if you're brand new to the game, it'll be 40 US. And if you'd like one of us to register for you, then it's only $100 a year. Yeah. Right? Yeah, happy yeah. to do that. What a deal. We'll make your username for you. We, we'll offer this piece. <laughs> bespoke treatment for you mm. for for an extra thousand a year i'll log your caches for you Ooh. oh there you go wow i didn't know we had these kind of services available. yeah this is great <laughs> remember that podcast we used to be able to do before they banned us <laughs> uh, are we having fun yet good, good old days yeah let's move on to number three okay, okay. number three is Understand cache sizes. Caches come in various sizes. They are micro, little tiny ones, small, regular, and large. And knowing the size can, can help know what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, micros are tiny. Hence the kind of, you know, it's kind of in the name, micro. Sometimes it's a film canister. Sometimes it's even smaller. Sometimes yeah. they're nano-sized. First time I found one of those, I thought, what on earth is this? <laughs> a small, their description is typically about the size of a sandwich box. I don't know how often you've used sandwich boxes, but <laughs> if you can imagine about the size of a sandwich. Uh, regular one. Now, that's similar to an ammo can. Ammo cans, I don't know how the Army keeps track of them because we look all over the woods and can never find them, but we <laughs> do find them occasionally. A large Tupperware box, something, well, larger than a sandwich box, mm -hmm. you know, Kind of thing, and then large. That's a very loose category. Their definition is anything bigger, such as a bucket for Monsieur, you know, a storage container, seven forty-seven. <laughs> Theoretically, that a could shed. be a large. It, yes. If you have a Russian cargo plane that's stuck in Toronto, uh, you could use that as a geocache at you the could. Toronto airport. There you go. Do you guys know about that? No, I don't know about that, but I don't think you could just walk on to the Toronto airport to log a geocache. Have you tried? I don't know. No. Like, so I'm, I'm it's right by the can. fence. I can't do, do it, walk up there at all with my expired <laughs> passport, but you know. There you go. So so Google uh, YYZ, the, the Toronto airport code, and uh, Russian uh, freight plane or Russian I got, airplane. And I got a Rush album. Different. Oh, that's different. Different YYZ. Okay. Way cooler. Yes. <laughs> okay. 
Um, yes, Keith so, says that so you how can long has this Russian nanos, aircraft been stuck there? Sorry, how how long has this Russian aircraft been stuck there since COVID? Um, well, yeah, since well, since <laughs> Russia invaded the Ukraine. Oh, I didn't Basically, know that. Okay. The, the plane was there. The um, the uh, um, the international issues of bans. I'm, I'm I'm not coming up with the right technical term here. Embargoes. The embargoes mm-hmm. went in place internationally against Russia, and this Russian cargo plane w- happened to be in Toronto. And the embargoes went in place. And I'm like, well, guess you're stuck here now. I don't know what happened to the crew. I would imagine they got home somehow, but Krakowia. Yeah. New York City closed. I would New like City, have, 50. I would like to have seen Montana. Yes. Different movie. No, oh, you guys. All okay. Right. Have have we talked about cash sizes? Not yes. necessarily airplanes, right? Okay. Yes. We cover them all. That's why we were talking about big, really big. Yeah. big, why, big. Yeah. The Y, Y, Z, the first Y is for huge. <laughs> Starcaster says, I don't think Mike Rowe is very small. At least he doesn't look that small on dirty jobs. Well, you know, when I watch on my phone, he's only about that big. Yeah. That's true. I guess we'll have to ask the Twonky when we get him on the show. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Exactly. All right. I'm Mike um, Rowe, and this is my small cash. Right? It is a funny pun, though. That's pretty good. Uh, do, 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 do. Learn the cache types. So we, we won't go through this in, in depth, but um, you know, there's there's plenty of content out there. And you know, shameless plug, I've got a YouTube video that goes through all this as well that uh, people can check out. But there are different types of cache when you're starting uh, caches when you're starting the game. Um, generally, you'll be looking for um, traditional caches the green icons on the map they're the, the most simple they're the ones at the given coordinates mm-hmm. and and if i may interject yes again using the official geocaching app helps you to find those easy ones uh, around you quickly right it limits you to three they're all traditional they're all easy to find go ahead no yeah that's uh, absolutely very good advice and i think the app kind of forces you to start when you've got a brand new account with traditionals, which is pretty smart because otherwise you get lost because beyond the traditional, there are also many other types of caches. We won't go through all of them, but there's multis and mysteries, um, uh, virtual caches, earth caches, uh, webcams and um, uh, letterbox and where it goes. I think I've named most. And then of course events, which um, Um, maybe, maybe one of you guys wants to talk about that idea, but it's technically something at a geocaching location but it's not you're finding other people <laughs> yeah, there you go. Finding. and then signing them and putting them <laughs> back in the container the way you found them yes <laughs> trading no. fairly for their clothes yes <laughs> don't do this at a cemetery it doesn't work out well no. okay no. uh no in all seriousness folks go to an event mm-hmm. yes um when you're new, you know, that that's going to pop up eventually here on your um, geocaching app. Take the opportunity, go meet other cachers. You're going to find they're very uh, friendly, outgoing people that want to help you. You know, you will be the star of the event if you show up and say, hey, I've only found 10 caches. Hey, hey, here's a new one. Yeah. And uh, people will want to take you out geocaching right that moment. Yes. Hey, you know what? Let me help help you. I found out some of these, some of these good uh, caches in the area. It it can be intimidating for people to go to their first event, and oh, and yeah. people will absolutely though. Though I mean, geocachers are like any other collection of human beings. There's a range of personalities. There's a range of uh, introverts and extroverts, and and there's people who already have friendships or you know, mm-hmm. I hate to use the term, but cliques. So. Yeah. When, when you show up, people will be in groups talking with each other and it'll feel really awkward to sort of walk up, not know anybody and do the hi. So I think, Chris, you've given this advice before, which I think is really, really good advice, which I is, wonder what that is. Which is to ask around for the host. Find out mm-hmm. who is the host of the event because guaranteed that person is going to give you a warm welcome. They'll introduce you. They'll explain what's going on. The easiest thing to do if you've never been to an event before, is walk up, 
the first person who you find who you can speak to just say hi i'm new i'm looking for the host and they'll say oh that's this guy or that young lady there and they'll tell you everything you need to know and yeah. blah, blah, blah. you'll have a good time yeah and it's an easy way to you know start the conversation yeah why well, here's something from kitty Quinn. Who has to write her name very lightly on all the locks. <laughs> she says, I went to an event in Edmonton last week. A brand new cashier showed up who had zero hides. Hmm. He did make his first hide later that day after watching the hockey game. Well, you know, at least you get your priorities straight. That's very Canadian. Yeah. Now, is it a hockey game or a hockey match? It's a game. Game. Okay. Game set match. No, it's different. exactly. Oh, she said zero hides, but meant to say zero finds. Ah, so they're brand, brand, brand new. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, cool. that's incredibly brand new. Yeah. No worries. And and don't worry about the typos, Kitty Quest, because we we have lots of speakos. So it's all good. <laughs> we have tacos. Yeah. Tacos. Woo. <laughs> Taco I'll Thursday. See you guys later. Now I'm hungry. All right. Well, let's see. You've learned the cash sizes, the cash types. If you really want to give yourself a leg up, understand what you're doing, read the cash title and read the cash description. The title can provide hints about the location of the cash or the theme of the cash, if you will. Maybe it's, you know, that'll give a little nudge in the right direction. And then in the description, it very often includes important details about the cache and its hiding spot. Sometimes there's red herrings in there, but for the most part, the description is going to lead you on the right path and yeah. head you in the right direction. On the, the road trip we were on last weekend, there were some caches where um, you know there, there was no hint. But when you look at the description, there was information in the description. Mm -hmm. So some people put the hint in the description so you know if it's not super super long which it usually isn't right. um just read through the hint and that'll or sorry read through the description um and and often there will be helpful information sometimes there's information that isn't super helpful for finding the cash but maybe it's some interesting history or or story about the location you're at so that can be kind of fun too exactly uh, and if you can't find it, don't post. I'm I'm looking back here. Hold on. Um, oh, yeah. There you go. Thank you. If you can't find it, don't automatically post a did not find. Right. Uh, reach out to the previous finders or to the cash owner. Right. So yeah. you can reach out right there on the on the cash listing. Click the owner, send them a message and say, hey, I'm having trouble finding this. Can you give me a hint? Can you give me a clue? That's right. And yeah, welcome, and welcome to the podcast, Hawaii and Miley there. Yeah, welcome. I don't recognize um, the cashier. That's, I, I don't either. That's, that's a, I mean, there's a whole show around <laughs> logging DNFs there as well. But, uh, um, but it is important to know by the end to, uh, to consider um, uh, logging, logging a DNF if, if you really are stuck because those are, those are helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, you've read, you've known, looked at the size, you've looked at the type, you've read the title and description. You think, all right, I think I know what I'm doing. Here we go down the trail. Before you go, one other thing to check geocaches all have a difficulty and a terrain rating. So this is tip number six check the difficulty and terrain rating. They're each rated on a scale of one to five, and they have a half in there one, 1. 1.5, 2, 2. 2.5, et cetera. And so if you start with the lower rated ones, a 1-1, one, one, let's say, will be the easiest terrain and the easiest difficulty uh, cache that you can look for. Difficulty, as you've probably figured out, is how hard the cache is to find. So is it super, super camouflaged and you'll, you need like tools to open it? That's going to be way up in the five range. If it's that magnetic Altoid can that's stuck in the guardrail. <laughs> that you look at you look at you know, there it is it's probably a difficulty one terrain again how challenging the terrain is to reach the cache a one you can i have reached out my car window without unbuckling my seatbelt and retrieved the cache and pulled it in 
you can walk right up to them. Maybe it's you have to get out of your car and walk a little ways, but you don't need any real athletic ability or special expertise or tools to do it. A five, you might need climbing equipment, scuba equipment, uh, something like that. The terrain is very difficult to get to. Or you just say land monkey to go get it for you. <laughs> yeah, technically a terrain five means special equipment required to to, yeah. to get to it. Um, I want to jump back for a sec. Chat Lackey woke up and was uh, pointing uh, pointing <laughs> us to something. I can have tacos? Yeah, well, uh, after, <laughs> after the tacos. But on the DNF conversation, and Keats uh, early in the show had actually also made a comment about DNFs. And um, so... I, I think combine those two pieces of advice. Like, don't don't like. Oh, I'm struggling to find it. Mm-hmm. Just just going to post a DNF and walk away. I mean, you could, um, and but if you put in an honest effort and maybe you try and contact the CEO and you don't get it because not not every CEO is sitting around waiting to see. Oh, I hope somebody messages me this minute. Right? So, <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, some that's CEOs right? are amazing. Some <laughs> CEOs get back to you within like five ten minutes, and that's a, yeah, it is mind. amazing. But but most don't. Um, uh, but yeah, there's there's no shame in logging a DNF. Yeah. Uh, there was a whole DNF pride thing from HQ at one point as well. So there you go. But yes, good advice from from Keith. So you know, find the balance between yeah. those those two things. And if you're looking for a bounce bounce cash, sometimes he puts his phone number right in the cash description. Mm-hmm. I have called him from a cash and go. Okay, what am I missing? <laughs> Yes, yeah, some some geo or some cash owners will actually put their phone number in there to call. I know DV Tim does the same thing. It's pretty good. Reach out and talk to me. It's okay. Yeah, there's no shame if you can't find it. Right. All right. So that's uh, terrain and difficulty. So yeah, those are uh, little star ratings. Mm-hmm. Um, either in, if you're looking at the website in the um, up near the top on the cash page, and if you're on an app, it'll be somehow listed in the app somewhere it'll be pretty obvious and difficulty terrain dt all right uh we talked a little bit about hints earlier and you know if you're if you are having trouble making the find you, you're at the given coordinates or you're close to the given coordinates you know within a few meters um and you know you've read the description and you've read the dt but you're just not finding well check the hint there's often hints my favorite is when you go to hint and it says no hint required. Yeah. Or look in the thank title. You, thank you for taking the time to write that into the hint field. That was very helpful. You can't do that anymore. <laughs> the uh, the reviewers say, no, if there's no hint required, then there's no reason to put this text in here. Thank you, reviewers. There you go. All right. But yeah, um, many, not all, but many cash listings will have a hint. Um, mm-hmm. And... Uh, it's uh, it's very helpful. One thing to know is on the web page, the hint looks encoded. It's in a code. It's all <laughs> gobbledygook. Mm-hmm. You don't know what it is. And honestly, when I first started playing the game, I was like, oh, what the heck is this? I don't know what this is. It is always, unless somebody does something intentionally really weird there, it is always in what's called ROT13, which is rotating the alphabet 13 letters. So it's an offset of 13 letters. Um uh, in in the alphabet, and I think on most apps, and definitely um, the the website, you can either click a button or it even just automatically decodes the ROT thirteen as mm-hmm. soon as you open it. Anyways, so yeah, it's there. I've seen people use the ROT thirteen and then spell the hint backwards, like magnetic backwards, and I'm like, mm. come on, Zagreb something like that yeah. Yeah. Well, okay whatever I, I get it but but usually the hint is actually helpful um i've put you know multi-stage hints in mine you know yep. general hint this will get you in the area more specific you know okay this gives it away but the other thing i was going to say with hints is often hints you will decrypt it and you'll still look at it and go ah it says missed. I don't know what that means. Or it says uh, taught required. Or mm-hmm. it says um, uh, what? What is that? Um, SPR or SPOR? Like mm. I, what? Like it's a mushroom? Like I, what? <laughs> what am I looking for? And there is a whole alphabet, a whole encyclopedia of 
uh, geocaching acronyms often specific to the locations um, that you go uh, caching in. So again, going to an event and mm-hmm. just asking, like, yeah, show up in an event and say, what's a spore? And people might laugh at you behind your back, but they won't laugh to your face. And they'll, they'll tell you, oh, it's a suspicious pile of rocks. And oh, okay. So then... You know, we'll, we'll laugh because you go, yeah, that's kind of silly. You're right. right? I, yeah. I get it too. <laughs> exactly. And then you have to go through, wait, which, which one does that mean? That's uh, oh yeah. <laughs> Eventually they stick. Yeah. Yeah. You know, after you've found that suspicious pile of rocks, mm-hmm. the next one will be incredibly easy to find. Cause you'll look for it and go, oh, Hey, I remember yeah. this. Okay, the next tip we have, and somebody has been reading our show notes because <laughs> oops, it just scrolled up on me. Uh, come on, click. Kitty Quest says, read recent logs for extra hints. Yes. So, you know, you can look at the web page, you can look at the app, and you can look at uh, the, the people who found it last, right? They left... Uh, a log, an electronic log mm-hmm. on the uh, web page or on the app. And that tells you hopefully a little something other than TFTC. And you go, I don't know what these four letters <laughs> oh, are. Like to buy a letter. Yeah. <laughs> um, and hopefully they say, Hey, that was a quick find. You know, I could get it right out of my car without even unbuckling or, you know, I hiked up this mountain for the last 10 hours to get here. And it kind of gives you an idea of, you know, what's involved. What you're getting into. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Uh, Wet coasters is sometimes a picture uh, in Mm -hmm. the cache listing or a picture in somebody's log Mm -hmm. uh, can give you a hint. There's some cachers I know who like to do uh, a ground zero photo. So not a photo of ground zero, but a photo from ground zero. Mm -hmm. So you can Mm kind of use that to orient yourself to where they were standing when they found it. Stuff like that can be helpful. Yeah, yeah I, great, great hint. I use the photos quite often. I'll look to say, okay, oh, yeah. look, they were standing over here. Exactly. Oh, this this tree matches that tree, mm-hmm. which can be really ha- handy as well when you're in different seasons because yeah, <laughs> the trees look different. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay, and I'm reading the next one, number nine. Okay. Hey, attention to attributes attributes are on the cache page they're easy to find on the cache page they may be more difficult to find in an app the attributes are going to tell you specifics about the cache and the area now these attributes are typically pictograms right little pictures that are going to say hey there's parking nearby or this is a good one for kids pets are allowed or it could tell you, hey, there are thorns nearby mm. or, you know, dangerous animals. Yeah. It, can, it can be both good and bad, um, a hint and a warning. So zombies run. Exactly. <laughs> there's, there's also, and if, if we're talking about that, there's also what are called negative attributes. So there's some yeah. attributes um, like the kid friendly, like 24-7 access that the cash owner can also set into a negative. So it's basically it has the red circle and the line through it then at that point. But, but so then it's helpful to know, like, is, is, you know, this, you know, one might have like stroller accessible, great mm-hmm. and kid friendly. Another one might have those same symbols, but with the X's through them, right. You're like, Oh, okay. So now, you know, eh, probably not a good one to bring the kids to. Kind of, kind of road sign like pictograms. Very much. Yes. yes. Oops. Same idea. Yeah, poison right. ivy in danger. Yes, that's a bad one. I wish, you know, you cash where I got poison ivy. Had, uh, I think I had poison oak. Uh, had had that listed and it didn't. Hmm. That sucks. Or uh, stinging nettles. How about that? Ooh. Stinging nettles tend not to bother me as much. Hmm. I don't know if I'm fully human. <laughs> well, we've often wondered the same thing. Whoa, now. Oh. Sorry, that that was inside words. Uh, Let's see. 
I think we're up to our final tip of the top 10. And thank you, by the way, to the chat room, because there's mm-hmm. just been a ton of great stuff coming in there. But tip number 10 on our list, and there's so many more things we could go into, is understand the geocaching map. Mm-hmm. You can go to the map. You can go there in a web browser. You don't even have to pull out mm-hmm. your phone or do anything and see the nearby caches that are around you. You can refresh the page. You can uh, filter it if you want to see a certain type of cache. Uh, there are icons there to say, oh, that's a puzzle, or oh, that's a webcam, you know, et cetera. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Fireworks are distracting me outside. I can, I can actually hear them now. And yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. So you can filter a type, difficulty size, almost everything that we talked about before. You can't filter by hint or that kind of thing, but... Uh, Maybe you're yeah. looking for a specific type to, I don't know, focus on to fill out a grid or a chart or something, or just, hey, I really like this type of cache. There you go. And again, it's you know we're we're really addressing this to the brand new cachers. So the yeah. the filtering that you can do in the basic app is or in the the official app is is relatively basic, and you can do much yeah. more advanced filtering on the, the mm-hmm. other apps. But generally, as a new cacher. You're not going to be doing, you're going to maybe filter by type. You're going to maybe, you know, all the things that Jim was just saying. So and anything you need to do in the basic app as a new cacher, you you pretty much can do. And then, you know, it's it just it, all this other stuff, all these other complexities, man, <laughs> it's, it's a rabbit hole. Oh, it can be. It yeah. can be. Um, we actually have a contributed number 11. Uh, so we're going beyond the top 10. Right, Thank to number you to 11. that birthday boy there, yeah. 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 Well, and only because it's his birthday. Okay, Am I even fair. going to acknowledge him tonight? Um, <laughs> he says, make use of the website. Don't limit yourself to the mobile apps. And I think that's a really good uh, chunk of advice. The, a, a, as a new cacher, yeah. I think if mm-hmm. you can, if you've got a laptop or a PC that you can log into and open it up, uh, definitely, definitely good good advice. And yes, Uh Houston, Texas, Dave suggests that we have turned it to 11. There you go. Because it's more than 10. This is a, a little camera that's on the back of my house. That's oh, I, the, oh, the live this, view. Yeah, this, is, this is what's looking out the back of my house. So, um, yeah, every now and Very then. Nice. Be, oh, I just heard it here. <laughs> it took a while for the sound to travel. Then, yeah, exactly. the light. But yeah, but there's stuff going on outside the window here. Then. That's fun. Yeah. So there you go. Let's just no, watch that for the rest of the show. No extra charge for the live fireworks show here. <laughs> the li- Whoa, Whoa, big one. Here, here I, I can unmute that. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> this is fun. Way to go, Jim. I feel like I'm there. <laughs> right. Happy 4th of July. Ooh, there you go. Was a dramatic <laughs> I one. love it. I love it. So are we looking towards the river then? Yes, that's looking south. From West Pasco, looking down, that's Kennewick across the river. The lights in the low part of the thing there down there, Kennewick. All right. So this is not an invasion. No, not that we're aware of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, and what is that smell? Oh no, it's different. <laughs> Hey, folks, thank you for taking the time to listen to this episode of Caching in the Northwest. I hope you enjoyed it. Holy cow! <laughs> Sorry, I muted that. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> well, it's it's one of your two. Oh, it's turns. it's my you, turn. You can decide yeah. which one. Um, or either me or Jim. We got to fix this at some point in time. But yeah, hey, we want to take a moment to thank Land Sharks and Gold Country Geotourism, our corporate Denali level sponsors, uh, not sponsors of the fireworks show uh, that we are <laughs> enjoying, but uh, definitely sponsors um, of Den- Denali corporate Denali level sponsors of this podcast. Landsharks.ca is the outdoor adventure and geocaching store. Check them out online. And remember they're shipping those online orders daily. And for absolutely amazing geocaching adventures, check out exploregoldcountry.com. And uh, it, hey, and just as an interjection, if you're just listening to the audio podcast, you might have to just go on to YouTube and watch the tail end of the feed to watch the fireworks that we're watching. <laughs> but hey, we want to thank all of our faithful Denali level supporters, especially those who have been with us for how many years now? Yeah, exactly. Um, since episode 200. But uh, all of you, uh, thank you very much. Land Sharks, Gold Country, Geotourism, Cool Cow Cashers, and Cashly, the geocaching app. Did I miss somebody? No, I don't think so. I think I got I got everybody there. You got it all. If you, you want to know... 
Oh, oh go ahead. If you want to know more about supporting this year podcast, click the Patreon link on the cashingnw.com. <gasps> Kaboom website. <laughs> Houston, Texas, Dave says, great show. I'm not sure if he's refer- referring to this episode or the fireworks. I think the fireworks. Probably the fireworks, yeah. I think so. <laughs> yeah. um, I just want to mention quickly, if you haven't heard your name listed on several episodes and you believe you're a uh, patron, it's possible your credit card has changed and it couldn't be charged a time or two. It stops trying and we move on. I'm not going to say anything. That's, you know. Yeah. People people give and then stop uh, the the giving as they need. I don't have a problem with it at all. So there you go. So let's start off with saying thank you, Wino Seattle. And MC3 Cats. And Green Words. And Limax. Ackerdock. B Pendragon. And the Terrible Tees. The Camp Clan. Happy birthday, I am. Boomer, 365, how appropriate. How appropriate tonight, yeah. Trexer. M-Nerve. Ari, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Sege Hove. I was hoping for boom. I, I hit the one and more fireworks went off. So <laughs> well, yeah. uh, Whidbey Island gal. Uh, terrible lunch, great cashier, gas station tuna. Nervous energies. Flagman, that's a good one for today. Yeah. Guy Hawker. Kitty Quest. Peach of Washington. Welcome back. Uh, J Car. Railroad. Gia Caches. U Talks to Rocks. CRS 98. Team Noltex. Log Work. Dora Moore. Geo Nav Pro. Genies. GSM times two. Kid Vegas 19. Just finding our way. And Teus. Subway Mark. You, Dak. How about the BC Rock Crawler? How about Wet Coaster? Ooh, this is somebody I found a couple of his caches last weekend. Mountain Bike. Ooh. LG 9000. Just Carlo. Seabeck Tribe. Geo Birder. And Butterfly Girl. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you know, I think we're stereo. I think we should have fireworks like playing every gun. time we read all the patrons. Yeah. Well, that's fireworks because our patrons are so awesome. They're getting a fireworks show. Well, folks, thank you for taking the time to listen to this episode of Cashing in the Northwest. Your support helps keep the quality shows coming. If you like the show, please click the Patreon link on the CashingNW.com website. And if you didn't like the show, let us know what you want us to talk about. But if you like the vibe, please subscribe wherever you get your podcast and leave us a review. If you were in a restaurant, you would tip. If you were in a live audience, you would clap. But since you're on a podcast, leave us a free, fast, fabulous, fantastic five-star review. Of course, you can call into 253-693-TFTC and leave us a comment, ask a question, or watch the fireworks with us any time <laughs> of the day or night. And of course, you can email us at feedback at cashingnw.com. Join us every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Pacific for a live show and chat. The show's produced by Chris Umfenauer, Jim Paul Woods, Jake Kennedy, and Brian Lang. It's listed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. Copyright 2024 by Chris Umfenauer. And folks, I ask you to stay tuned for The After Show. And what an after show it is. Yeah, it's a real <laughs> show tonight. There you go. At least anybody listening to the audio version will be able to hear this. Yes. Keith says, fireworks be distracting. Yeah. He uh... also says, while America is celebrating its independence from Britain, Britain had an election tonight. I have those dates lined up. Yes, that was a funny little thing. Um, Let's see. We already know that for our so-called podcast baking, says I am, we're doing ice cream cake. Nice. He didn't invite me over. Oh. Um, did we read from Kitty Quest? Go to a local event if you can and meet some other cashers. They will be happy to get to know you and give you some help if needed. We we did not um, specifically cover that, but absolutely great advice. Yep. And uh, Green Words has some fatas. Two nearby Earth caches were archived, were recently archived. One was a really good one at uh, uh, Kanaka Creek. Kanaka. Kanaka. 
Kanaka Creek. Yeah. Uh, Naka. So, that makes so sense. that's a really good point. Um, uh, have been observing that lately. Um, HQ, uh, has been going through an exercise in the last couple of months where if an earth cash owner is just clearly not engaged in the game, they have not been online for several years. Um, they are putting a, a notice, uh, a 30 day notice, um, on that earth cash. And if the CEO doesn't respond, it, it's going to get archived. So, um, you know, if there's if there's some old earth caches in your mm. neck of the woods that you've been saving for a special date, you might want to go check if they're still there. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I didn't um, notice it, that. It would be interesting to, I, I don't know if that would be worthy of an entire show, but it would be curious to chat with some of the folks at HQ about that cleanup exercise. Well, I want to get an earth aware on to talk geo about aware. geo aware thank you yep. uh for earth caches you know geo yeah. aware for earth caches not an earth aware for geo caches right um <laughs> and <laughs> fair enough and uh go over you know earth caches once more it's always a good a good show to do so now yes. she also says that she got a cce for 2025 this week Nice. Congrats. Fantastic. Way to go. Now, the, the qualifications, If I'm, I'm going to go by memory, but you have to be an active geocacher. You have to have hosted an event this year. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's about I think it. that's it, yeah. And place a cache this year. There you go. Mm, you much, there man. you go. Put the punctuation on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Iham says we were able to, were you able to bring David Letterman in to read the top ten? No, you're stuck. I'm gonna, no. no. That's why we didn't read them backwards. That's right. Oh, that's right. Okay, we talked about this one. Yeah. Um yeah. <laughs> okay, so you know, I made a mistake. I mentioned something and it started everything up that, you know, <laughs> that you can do a typo. And I said, you could do a talk. O. it's a T L A K dash O. And suddenly, you know, Brylang perks up. Can I have tacos? <laughs> to which he says, I'm having a burrito now, not tacos. Sure. Get my hopes up for tacos. Yeah. And start casher. Starcaster says, maybe you'll need to change the podcast to Tuesday evenings if yeah. there are too many tacos. <laughs> Thus, it becomes Taco Tuesday. <laughs> uh, yep, you definitely now, started something there, Chris. Guys, when I, when I go back and I say, oh, yeah, you know what? Somebody mentioned something in chat. Let me go find it. Sometimes it's hard to find because all of these things are scrolling <laughs> by. <Okay? laughs> and I absolutely love the banter going on uh, in the background. Maybe it's not related to the show. Maybe it's just two friends catching up. That's perfectly welcome. Um, I encourage it. I want you guys to feel free to, to connect with each other. Uh, and if we can encourage that, that's all the better. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, all good. I think so. <laughs> Peach says, I hosted an event in April, but I didn't get a CCE. So everyone that has hosted an event didn't automatically get one. Either that or I made someone at Matt at HQ. <laughs> Maybe you just haven't got one yet. I, yeah. I think, yeah. I think Have I you got... hidden a cache this year? Oh, good thing to keep in mind yeah. as well. And yeah, and Brian says they'll be giving them out between now and December. So there's mm -hmm. lots of time yet. Aha, she says, I haven't placed a cache yet. There you go. Well, there's lots of time yet, but pitter patter. And I have no idea how Peach could make anybody mad. Right? No. There you no. go. She's just too sweet. There you go, folks. Thank you so much for joining us. And until next week, get out and get caching in the Northwest. <laughs>